the uh, warning letters w went out uh, because of the tone jammer. And uh, when Dan had said earlier that his friend, he had a good friend who was the tone jammer and received a letter, it turns out that that person obviously was KE9RY. So it looks like uh, the tone jammer, at least the tone jammer in November of 2016, uh, looks like it was a high probability it was uh, K9, or, I'm sorry, uh, KE9RY because Dan had said that on the air. Dan had said that it was his friend that was the tone jammer and he received a letter. I would have never dreamt that that would have been KE9RY, but he received a letter for intentional interference for activity on that day. So I think we can put two and two together and come up with four. AC9MB. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's that's an actual live moron uh, barging in on the frequency, trying to talk to his boyfriend Joe Italiano. But no, that's not Mimlet. That is Jelly Roll live and in Technicolor psycho babbling about KE9RY to Joe Italiano AC9MB which is not out there and not responding to him but he's using Joe's call in order to get out there and psycho babble about Tom what Are you just now coming to this conclusion, or is this something you've been running along with pretty regular here? Oh, no, no, you're absolutely right. Uh, K1LEM, Gary E. Davis, he takes fruit mass. Oh, very good, with K1LEM, ac 9 d well, yeah, the recording itself is evidence against him. He, he specifically, N2ETJ specifically says, he states, I'm just going to talk over him anyhow. I mean, so that's, that's uh, when you state you're going to uh, intentionally interfere with someone, the game is pretty much over. I mean, there's nothing left. I mean, your intent to interfere has been defined by you. And he stated that in the recording that the FCC provided you, you as evidence Jolly against Jolly you. It's very, very bizarre. But I, I will tell you that I am still in shock. I am still in shock that uh, when K9RFY was telling me that the tone jammer was a good friend of his, a close friend of his, I would have never, ever thought that it was K9RFY. asses on the radio. And they seem to be with proud tone, of that. Which is a CW carrier on 7199. That's what he was doing. I would have never thought that that was him. I mean, that just seems like such a chicken crap way to do it. I mean, 
I, I'm still shocked by it. I really am. And I would have not known that the interference that they were talking about was this tone jamming unless I would have had the recording. And I have uh, probably 10 hours of recording on the uh, day in question, which is uh, 7 November of 16. 7 November of 16. And I was playing them back. And, and I was calling CQ. I was in the clear calling CQ. And then in comes the tone jammer. And then he goes away. And I call CQ. And then you come in, and then we're having a, a conversation, and the tone jammer's all over me. So then we shut down for a while, he goes away, we come back, and the tone jammer comes back. So the FCC nailed it right there. They saw that that was intentional interference. It wasn't somebody just trying to tune up uh, to get their transmitter in line or something. So it, I, I'm still in shock by it. I, I thought, I thought a guy that he comes on, he comes on here with, and he says, uh, I believe you are why. Why? Because we love amateur radio. Sure he does. And then he plays a cheap trick like this to tone jam a carrier jam thinking that that might fly by the FCC because they think he's tuning up or something. I can't believe it. AC9 MV. Uh, AC9 MV, K1LEM. K1LEM, AC9 MV. Well, I'll, I'll tell you, when, uh, you know, when Dan said that the, the tone jammer was one of his close friends, you know, I, I had a, a pretty good idea of who his close friends are, and, and uh, you know, I, I knew, knew that Tom was his close friend, but I immediately discarded the idea that KE9RY was the tone jammer. I, I just, it, to me, it just didn't even fit. I just, I just didn't, uh, 60, 70. I thought I have for, a for up until today, I thought it was another station. So um, and when I tried to figure out if it was that other station, I never got total confirmation. To make so a first class royal. And when I looked at the recordings myself. today and not listened to them, I mean, the, the tone jammer was extremely active that day. I, I was calling CQ on 7200. I had a clear channel. Everything, everything was open, and the tone jammer came in there. So, um, and then, you know, from Dan's own words, you know, he said the tone jammer is a very close friend of mine, and I would have never guessed that it was him. It shows, it shows you how, you know, how you view people can sometimes be just totally wrong. I mean, that's the action of a real. I think that's really low because you have to remember why did the tone why why was the tone jammer effective against me? It was targeted specifically at me. And the reason was because I'm using an old 520 Sierra. No notch filter. And when I had revealed that the, you know, I was using a 520, that's when the tone jamming started because they, they, they knew that I didn't have a notch filter. Now, 95% of the people out here have a notch filter, so it doesn't going to... So what that told me was... Dan and KE9RY specifically targeted me. They were jamming me specifically because that's the only the only person that was going to be affected by that type of jamming. Now, and I would have never guessed that it would have been Tom. Never. If you were to put my back up against the wall, put a gun to my head, and say, who do you think it is? Do you think it's Steck Bauer? I would have said no. I don't think it's Deck Bauer. I thought it was somebody else down in Kentucky. But anyway, it just shows you how you can be oh, fooled out Joe, here. I certainly so was fooled. Okay, and I'm L still trying to wrap my there. head around why he would do that four. specifically to me. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm struggling with that. Uh, Oh. Hey, listen to K1 LEM down there groveling around on the noise floor. Trying to get his message through to you, Joe. Hey, hey, Joe, I'll tell you what I'll do. Just show you what a good guy I am, Joe. Uh, you want me to relay for K1 LEM? I'll let you know whatever sexually abusing our children. And then you find out when the investigation. Proceed that it's the superintendent that's doing it. 
as to say to you there, I'm more than willing to volunteer. I think, Joe, our faith in human nature, does it not? Uh, it really says, well, you, you can't really trust anybody. You sort of have to uh, uh, go out by uh, uh, the book, and uh, nobody is uh, beyond uh, uh, nobody is beyond uh, the possibility of committing a crime. And I think that's what the police do when they look at things. They they they, they say, well, yeah, yeah, you're the mayor, and this and that, and but uh, still, uh, I'm sorry, mayor, uh, you're still under investigation. And that's what he is. That's the old. Uh, Owl, uh, uh, the old owl of Eagle, Wisconsin, the old owl that sits in the tree and, and goes, uh, hooty hoo, hooty hoo, hooty hooty, hooty hooty hoo. Uh, but of course, uh, we know that he has a duplicious, and I think the word Joe is duplicious, a duplicious personality. We know that. Now, I already uh, uh, told him about that, much to his chagrin. Uh, I told him about that. Uh, but uh, And I think he did uh, some level understand it, but then again, uh, how many people really have a self-understanding of what drives them? And you can't even make them uh, admit the truth uh, until the facts are right before them. And there are some people that even when they're holding the, uh, you know, the murder weapon right in their hand and there's blood on it, uh, they still say they didn't do it. So <laughs> this is the kind of uh, people uh, we deal with every day. Uh, I mean, uh, this is the kind of people that uh, you don't want to... Let me, let me put it to you this way. Let me rephrase that. It's the kind of people you don't want to deal with every day. And find uh, out you don't want to do that kind of person. But remember, that personality man, you know, came right up from 4313. And his little strong. buddy there, N3, N2ETJ, he may not be the only one that's holding a retriever either. You know, uh, you never know what's going on there. But again, uh, he didn't get any letters that I know of. And I know that line. I said, hey, look, uh, we don't want uh, you to get one of these, so I'm going to tell you that I got one, and I'm taking it seriously. <laughs> yeah, very good, Webb. Okay, well, just another disappointing day in amateur radio. So anyway, uh, see you later. I'm going to think about this a little bit. But, uh, yeah, it, could, it's, uh, it was really a shocker for me, you know. Yeah, okay, whenever you on Friday. Yeah, I knew. Yeah, I, like I said, I would have, I would have bet a lot of money that it wasn't stick power. But uh, when Dan said, "Oh, it was my close friend that got a letter uh, from uh, for for tone jamming," and uh, you know, I asked Dan. I said, "Well, who was it?" And then he then he went quiet. And it wasn't until today that uh, you know the letter. I looked at the letter and it said seven November of sixteen was the day in question. So I went back and I, I listened through oh all my, my recordings, God. and yeah, that was the day oh the Tone no. Jammer was oh extremely no, not, active. I mean, very jamming. clearly not jamming me uh, with that tone when I was calling CQ in the clear. So that, that's why they dropped the hammer on him. But, uh, but again, you can be fooled, and I certainly was. AC9 MB, I'll see you later with them. AC9 MB, I don't even have my antenna connected. Really nice signal. Yeah, well, that, of course you can be fooled, and um, and that's why uh, people are fooled by con men, people are fooled by cherubish, and people of that ilk. Uh, <coughs> you just have to be wary that there are these personalities out there, and you don't take everybody at face value. I guess uh, when you're naive, you do, you, 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 you tend to. But then again, when you look at the history of behavior uh, of K-9-R-Y, migration to strange, uh, you know, uh, uh, putting up towers, high towers, and multi, you know, element antennas and alpha amplifiers, and yet he only occupied one frequency. He wasn't a DX. Uh, whatever DX he ever pulled in, he pulled it in on 14313, and he pulled it in to cause uh, some uh, uh, some embarrassment, or maybe some not embarrassment, but uh, to uh, uh, annoy. Uh, some of the people that wanted to use the frequency. Now, this is uh, a, a personality that you have to really uh, understand, I guess. Uh, it does exist. Why it exists, I don't know. 
I've always thought it might be poor toilet training in childhood, but let's not get too Freudian here. Uh, but uh, anyway, Joe, yeah, that is sort of interesting, isn't it? Uh, well, I came here, obviously, to uh, say uh, I, I, I thought the frequency could operate, and we could do it uh, by Part 97, and I would ID K1LEM, and I, I would uh, do uh, whatever I could to uh, prevent this. But uh, Cherubish right now is back jamming again uh, right on the frequency. The very thing that the FCC told him not to do, he's jamming me right now. Uh, trying his best uh, to, uh, to jam me and you, Joe. And this is what he's been doing ever since he got the letter from Lawrence Smith. He's been right back doing the same thing. So this is a, a person with a personality that, that is uh, not uh, redeemable. You're not, you're not going to clear this individual up because he has no conscience whatsoever. He, he is a sociopath in every sense of the word. So you're, not, you, you're never going to clean up Daniel George Cherry Vish, ever. Uh, and uh, so, uh, so let's not even, even go there. You're just going to have to walk around him and hold your nose because there's nothing else you're going to do until the FCC uh, takes his van out there and shuts him down. <coughs> and I got the feeling that if they've got the resources out of Powder Springs, Georgia, they'll be heading out there uh, uh, to shut him down because he's on this frequency doing this day in, day out. And as long as you and I are still here, Joe, we're going to stimulate him to interfere. The FCC is going to go out there to Ripley, Tennessee. They're going to get a recording of him interfering, and he's going to lose his license, and that's it, or at least get an NAL. So anyway, we'll catch you later, Joe. Joe, take care, and always nice to uh, converse with you. And I think your Memorax little brother's on there, too. Uh, I, I believe I, I heard something like that in there. Anyway, you take care, and uh, have a good evening out there in the uh, uh, great uh, <clears throat> Midwest. AC9MB, K1LEM, bye-bye. Hey, maybe you slip Joe a little bit of tongue on the way out, you know. You don't want to just leave Joe hanging there. Slip in a little bit of a tongue there, K1LEM. That way he can get a little taste of your big fat sweetness and he'll he'll be in there for you at a later date. So try to slip Joe AC nine M V a little bit of K one L A M tongue. Could you do that for me? Would it be too much of an imposition? Gary don't want to slip Joe the tongue. He's been doing it all along. He just hasn't broadcast it. Come on, Gary. Give Joe a little tongue. Let him suck on it, buddy. Where'd you go, Gary? I'm sorry. If I was out of line, please feel free to tell me. He wasn't out of line to me, but he was to him. Oh, gosh. Hey, one alien. Did I hurt you, little feeling? I'm sorry there. 400 pounds, 5 foot 6, no neck, triple chin. Piece of Star Wars, Star Trek action figure collecting, a lot, Alyssa Milano loving piece of shit. I apologize. No, huh? No, no, no. Oh, absolutely not. I refuse to accept those accusations. <laughs> Gary ain't coming to ham fest. Joe's not coming to ham fest. N2FEV's not coming to ham fest. I have to go have a good time, be with all my friends, socialize, have fun, party, drink, have all the, you know, all the good shit that's involved in the ham fest. So I have to do all that stuff. Then I have to come back home. Turn on the radio, 
and hear the same four misfits out there sucking each other's ass like a bunch of powder puffs and a gay pari. And, uh, well, you know, you know my dilemma. Yeah, you sound like you've already started to drink this evening. Oh, my goodness. You're getting oyster all the time. How much have you had to drink already? And you know, you know what? If I have decided to have a drink this evening, Gary, that gives you good cause to jump in the car, come on over here to my house, and suck my cock. Anyway, it's on, uh, I have that on MP3. Thank you, Dan. That's going up to Laura Smith. Oh, good, because I want Laura to know that I want you to suck my cock. All right, well, uh, okay, Dan. Like I said, how much have you had to drink today? Have you sucked my cock? Now, I might have to whip it out of there and wipe it off with a, with a wiper there. You know, something that's antiseptic on it. But come on over here, Gary, and put the old blow job on me, would you? Dan, I can always tell when you've had too much to drink. You know, it would be good for you if you shut the radio off at this time because uh, MP3 files are being made of you right now. Uh, but I know you won't. Hey, well, yeah, uh, we got the recorder going. Thanks. If you haven't got your damn head too much to drink meter all calibrated and stuff. You know, there's nothing I hate worse than a guy who has a damn head too much to drink meter not calibrated. Because, you know, if you, if you don't have that calibrated, well, my God, I mean, you don't even know where you're at here on the scale. You have to come in here and, and, and calibrate your meter and merge them in the and say something. And then you have to be able to come in there and say, Man, you have too much drink meter. Oh, gosh. What are you going to do? Oh, oh my God. Gary, Gary, and has the world come to an end or is it just me? Where'd you go, Gary? Gary, Dan's talking to you. Gary, where'd you go? Now, don't come in here and leave me hanging there, fat Pillsbury Doughboy. I mean, my God. You know, you come in here and you run your big fat frog and mouth and then you just disappear? That's not right. Gary. It ain't right, Gary. Even Phil said so. Where you go, Gary? Where'd you go, Gary? Well, I guess we lost Gary, Phil. He just can't handle you. Oh, I get it. He can't handle you, man. He just can't uh, Oh my gosh. Well, hey Gary, you know, if you can't if you don't think you can handle me, Gary, don't <laughs> don't bite off more than you can chew, fat ass. Where'd you go, Gary? Come on, Gary, don't be bashful. You come in here all the time flamboyantly shoot your big fat five foot six, four hundred pound ass. You know, why all of a sudden, Gary, uh, you just disappear? Normal conditions, Gary, you're in there shooting your four hundred pound, five foot six, no neck, more chins than a Chinese phone book ass off. And then all of a sudden, what, Gary, you're going to disappear? Where'd you go, fat boy? Hey, Gary, you gonna take that? Looks like he is, doesn't it? I wouldn't have took that myself. I'm gonna be honest with you. I wouldn't have took that. No. Where'd you go, Gary? Hey, howdy, Dan. Oh, wow. God. I'm sorry. 
<laughs> if anybody out there feels that I was unjust or, or, or you know, maliciously Is he drunk strong, again? Uh, candy coated yeah. that too much. Anybody that feels damn. like I was a little bit overbearing, please I let me know because I'm truly concerned with that. Where'd you go, fat boy? <laughs> hey, 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 uh, hey, gas bag, where'd you go? Uh, I don't think he likes me anymore. Uh, well, that's a damn shame. I'm down. That's all I can tell you there. I mean, you know, you have may you may have some reservations, Gary. You may feel like that if you got in a car and you had somebody drive you because we know you're not mentally capable to drive yourself. But if if you got in a car and somebody was driving your big fat homo ass sedate um which is, you know, doubtful. But if you did, by chance, have somebody to drive your big, fat, queer, homo ass to Dayton there, and, and you had the misfortune to actually cross paths with me at Dayton, and... <laughs> oh, Gary, it probably wouldn't be a good thing, you know, it really wouldn't. I mean, I know I pick on you and I say a lot of things that I probably should say <laughs> about you. But anyway, Gary, it is actually shows a, 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 a smidgen of intelligence on your part if you would opt out on going to Dayton because Gary if you did and you had the unfortunate mishap of crossing my path somewhere there at the Hamvention oh my god we'd have to get a forklift in there to pick your big fat ass up off the floor I've thought about that, Phil. I have thought about that. So, Gary, if you decided to bring that mail order self protection pistol or your concealed carry weapon thing with you today, uh, now this is for your own benefit, Gary. No, I'm not trying to be selfish or anything. But if you could. Before you walk in the hand mention, if you could sort of wish out a bunch of KY jelly into your hand and lube that gun up really good. I mean, get the barrel, the cylinder, the handle, get all that stuff nice and lubed up there. Because if you show up at Dayton with a pistol, Gary, it needs to be KY jelly up real good uh, just to save you the discomfort when I show oh, that syndrome. Uh, uh, KY jelly, if you should happen to decide to be brave enough to have somebody drive your little incompetent ass to Dayton, now, this is just me, so, but if you so should happen to be a some nitwit into driving your big fat ass to Dayton there, be sure to bring your gun with you, and be sure to smear that baby down with KY Jelly, because I would hate to see you go through a bunch of 
unnecessary discomfort when I shove that right up your big fat homo ass. I had another drink. You know what? I don't know if you think that's smart or not, but without a call sign, that little mark mark is not worth the fucking time you spent on it. You stuttering your speech now, Dan. Uh, I hope you don't intend on uh, driving tonight. Oh, no, no. No, no if I was going to let them drive there, fat boy, I'd drive over there and just stomp in their ass, slit your throat, leave all your arteries hanging out, dripping blood all over the place. You know, you know yeah, what kind of guy I am there, fat oh, bag, but... Uh, We're going to send this to Laura Smith, uh, Dan. You drunk on the air again. Oh, yeah. Hey, could you send that, like, double express or or rush shipping? Yeah, I mean, if you don't have the money there, well, let me know, and I'll send it to you by PayPal, because I want to get that to her just as quickly as we can, fat ass. Oh, I just hope you don't, uh, you don't drive there. Oh, uh, maybe man, I should call her if we talk to Tom. You're either. drunk and possibly going to drive. I don't feel like driving. And, and nothing well, I've got their number if you want me to call her if we pray. Uh, suck butt. You know? I mean, shoot, you know? No, no, you're slurring your speech now, Dan. You're, you're definitely drunk. You're way over the wall. Way over the wall, oh boy. Uh, you're hey, slurring you your speech. Hey, oh, well, alive, uh, I hope those of you that uh, really want to know about K9RSY would listen to K1LEM and AC9MV and N2SUV because we know about it. <laughs> and not too much. Well, actually, there's a lot to know, but there's nothing you really want to know. Uh, anyway, Dan, you, you, you stay put. Why don't you drive that car tonight? K1LEM. Okay, well, I'm going to bed out to a barrel. Take several beers, had a good meal, rode around in the beautiful weather, and you're still sitting there on your fat ass yapping on the radio. Good God, what kind of life must you have? You're not a bad guy. W-U-9-W and here amongst these losers. As long as you go out and find guys that are, are consenting with what you're wanting to do, uh, you know, I, I, I guess it's all right. I don't see a problem with you uh, sucking off Joe or or uh, KB3 MZQ or N2FU. You know, it, that's your own business. Hey, if you can get a camera focused in on Gary E. Davis going down on AC9MV, you'd see Gary's lips bouncing off the muff. He would have hot Sweaty testicles jingling on his chin. K9 RSY, AC9 MV. Is that AC9 MV? My God, Joe, you are the answer of your collection because you are pond water and wheat, man. I mean, how can you even get out there and try to make a call with that little S2 signal? <laughs> Dan, Dan, uh, can you hear me now? Uh, have you been drinking, Dan? Have you been drinking? Like Over. You some Gary hung in your throat there. Uh, oh uh, boy, uh, Joe. <laughs> oh no, no hey, uh, right. Danny boy, yeah, have you been? Uh, that is exactly what I thought when I heard. <laughs> I can handle the truth. I'm not You're sure I'm going to hear it. An explanation. I know what hacking is, and you just swallow a little bit more than you can chew. Spit it out, Joe. Yeah, just spit oh, well. it out, Joe. He, he won't shut up. Come on, spit it out, Joe. You know it's you not know yours. Not spit I have to it wait. out. Spit it Please out, follow. Joe. It's not yours. Come on, Joe, spit the crap out. That wasn't yours. Oh, you know it to, wasn't yours. I'm trying yours. to talk Dan off the ledge here. It sounds Come like on, he's Joe, heavily intoxicated. Over.
stupid like I thought you were, and I can have my way with you from this point forward. Well, I don't swing that way, Dan, but I appreciate your interest. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you do. I'm glad you appreciate my interest there. But, uh, you know, I love little little pencil neck geeks like you that take this opportunity to come in there and strut your feathers and make you feel like you're a man talking behind your microphone like a big shit there. You know, it, it's adorable. It's plum adorable. I love to see guys like you try to search around and find their manhood by via radio. <laughs> you're sitting here telling me that you're getting off on me being a coward behind a microphone when you're back talking behind a microphone. You're a moron. Oh, my goodness. Well, hey, uh, I'll be a junior there in about ten days there. Come on up and we'll chit-chat about it in person. You know, I would hate to rob you from the experience of having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me, you know, live behind your radio desk there. There's nothing more fun than that. So, uh, hey, I'm looking forward to meeting you there, buddy. Come on down. Uh, I'm an eight-lander. When you see oh, a six-foot-four guy good. comes I'm up behind you, you'll know who it is. I'm real proud of that. Uh, you know, I'm glad to see that you're proud of that. And I hope you can come on down and, and say hi, join the rest of the guys, and, you know, have some fun. You know, really, radio bond there. Not any of this little drive-by, spot-off-at-the-mouth bullshit. I'm, I'm talking about real conversation between guys one-on-one. -on -one. So, yeah, looking forward to seeing you. Yeah, you know, you'll get it. I, I, I can't assure you of that, sir. <laughs> oh, 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 let's laugh a little bit. Come on, let's chuckle a little bit and make this a funny, a funny conversation. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I understand. Uh, did that work for you? Uh, it works for me. Does it work for you, Dan? Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm good with you. Then we got not much more to talk about, do we? No, I think we're pretty much done here, but feel free to come up and uh, come back in and, you know, if you want to re-engage, you feel free to do so. Oh, I do feel free to do so. Well, good, good. Come on in any time you want. Oh, hey, well, I will. There's nothing that you can do to stop like me. You come in here and tip straight up. You know, I don't know what, I, what it is about it I like, but <laughs> it is fun. Well, I'm glad you enjoy it, Dan. That's what ham radio is about, isn't it? That is exactly what it's about. I'm, I'm glad I enjoy it, too, sir. And you have yourself a wonderful evening, K9 RSY. All right, then. Yeah, go, ahead, go grab another uh, couple shots there, Dan, and uh, we'll see you in the morning. Well, go in there and whip out one of your wife's little tooties here and lick around on it, and why don't you give her some excitement? You know, I mean, since you're advising me on what to do with my personal life and enjoyment, I thought maybe I'd give you a little bit of guidance. You never know, it might help you out. Go in there and pay her a little bit of attention, and you never know, you might re harvest some benefits that you never imagined possible. What makes you think I haven't already done that this evening? Okay, okay. Well, I think we understand each other. Like I think we've uh, reached the pinnacle there, of our relationship right now. But if you'd like to take it to the next level, feel free to do so. Oh, I, uh, like I said, I'm going to take you up on your offer to uh, have a meet and greet there in uh, Zaya. Oh, great, great. Hey, walk on up. Uh, if you don't find me at West Mountain Radio, I, I don't know where they're located anymore because it's not... Uh, Hera Arena. But if you don't find me at West Mountain Radio, I think they're in Building 3. If you don't find me there, you can catch me at the Bob Heil uh, booth or possibly uh, uh, W2IHY Julius's booth. Uh, if you don't find me there, uh, check out... Um, Check out the uh, uh, FDM Duo, the E-Lab booth, but I should be easy to find. Oh, you'll be easy to find. I'll just look for the bourbon tracks in the sunlight. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, 
I'll be the guy with the beard. I mean, you know, it's it's not that hard to figure out, but I'll I'll be the guy with the beard. If if you want to get a preview of coming attractions, just go to QRZ, and that will give you an idea of what to look for. Well, it covers up the facial features. I'm, you know, yeah, it's good to be honest with you, I'm very impatient. And I look at that and I'm thinking, is that all it grew? You know, I mean, every time I look at it, I'm thinking, damn, shouldn't that thing be longer by now? You know, I do that every day. I mean, aside from looking at my face behind the whiskers and saying, Oh, you good-looking bastard, don't you ever die. I got news for you. That beer will grow long after you're dead. Oh, uh. <laughs> There's another guy looking for a cock to suck. Oh, my God. You do. You don't really mean that. Dan, Daniel, uh, K9 RSY from VA Drill G. You know, Dan, I really wish I had a lower IQ so I could enjoy your company. Uh, I know you have to worry about a lower IQ there, Ron, but hey, you know what? It really like a from time to time to have propagation be in favor to you because I really miss being on 14313 and listening to your bullshit. But once in a while, every once in a while, propagation would be good on 40 and you can remind me of what I've been missing. Well, how about I just say this? I really wish that everybody that was once on 14313 was all back there just one more time. Honestly, that's where there was some real intellectual arguing going on from the dark cowboy and the Polish side. I mean, make no doubt about it, that was real entertainment. This is Toys R Us out here, Dan. Yes, it was a 1200 Sportster. I had a great time on it. It ran like a champ. And, um, and uh, uh, yes, I was on trial for murder. I was found innocent of the charges. And thirdly, I shit once a day in the Jesus in the morning when I first get up. Uh, I hope that satisfies everybody's interest. Oh, no, 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 it's solid as a rock, man. If I happen to eat corn the night before, it's got all sorts of old smiley faces. As a matter of fact, it looks a lot like M2FUV. Well, thank you, thank you, and uh, if any time you'd like to know, I'm a very transparent guy. I like to help everybody out if I can. K9 RSY. Well, the last part of the one is taking the Harley. I know, I know. The more the murder and the Harley riding, it is kind of humdrum, regular, everyday stuff. But the pooping now, that is exquisite.